the tumblers of a lock are aligning for us. This is gonna be good. We're gonna shoot this buck. One of the reasons that one comes to New Mexico to hunt antelope, of course, is the chance at a really good antelope. There's moving now. This is it. It's either gonna happen here or it's not gonna happen at all. The idea here was an old rifle, the 1885 high wall, with iron sights, just kind of doing it the old way. Can you see him? He, he's out of sight right now, I think. Can you see him, Greg? Let's kind of stand by and see what happens here. Where are you? Oh yeah, got him. Yeah, that hook hooks out to the out to the left, doesn't it? It almost looks like that left from the broke off. Are you looking at him pretty clearly there? Yeah. Let me see if I can see him in the scope. Does it fit right on him? Pretty close. Greg, you got glass on him? Yeah, it looks like he might be susceptible to a little decoy in action. He's kind of seems about half interested in us, doesn't he? Yeah. One of the aspects to a New Mexico antelope season is that there's only two days to it. Doesn't leave a lot of time for hunting. There's a lot of pressure, uh, and it builds, and it builds quickly. It's a challenging assignment for any hunter, a pronghorn season spanning only 48 hours. And to raise the bar even higher, outdoor writer Greg Tinsley will use a classic single-shot rifle, the Uberti 1885 High Wall, chambered in 4570. And you throw in one of these 1885 High Walls uh, with iron sights, and, and you, you've really got kind of a, a, a mountain to climb, and you got to climb it pretty quick. Tinsley is covering the difficulties and thrills of a time-constraining hunt with a late 19th century style rifle. Guide Bryce Manziel will take Tinsley and host Joe Coogan into the vast open Wild West country in pursuit of the fastest game animal in the Western Hemisphere. Let's just go over this ridge right here and we'll see if we can spot one and All right. have a look. We were very fortunate to be able to actually go to the ranch that we were going to be hunting the next day and have a chance to, to look for antelope, but also to get a feel for this country, which is big country. I mean, it's big sprawling plains and grasslands and full of cactus and mesquite. And they talk about big sky country being Montana, but I can tell you that there's nothing about New Mexico that's not big sky country. You think there's nothing there, and then you turn around and boom, there they are. From this distance, Joe, that one looks like a keeper. He sure does. He certainly warrants a closer look. We need to get over there in his county. We may have to reset our watches when we get over there, too. <laughs> we may be crossing into another time zone, but <laughs> if we have to, we have to. My first antelope hunt goes back to actually one of my first assignments after I joined Peterson's Hunting Magazine. The thing that, that, that struck me almost immediately was how similar the pronghorn is, both in the country where he's found and the way he looks, particularly at a distance, to the South African spring bug. Where do you figure to be at first light tomorrow morning? Um, probably on the east side of this. Is that country we can't see from here? Yes, sir. Well, I mean, it's a long way from here, isn't it? A long way. This antelope hunting, a lot of times, it's, uh, it's covering country, and we had a whole lot of country to cover, uh, uh, tens of thousands of acres. So anyway, we're stretching our legs, and next thing you know, tarantulas were out moving around. Yo, pick that up. Pick it up. I need to get a shot of it. You pick it up. <laughs> I wish my wife was here. She loves spiders. And <laughs> I like not. He's always got in the back of his mind ideas for what's going to be interesting to illustrate the article or the field test or the column, whatever it might be, that he's going to be writing. Yo, can you kind of hold still? I'm shaking like a leaf, man. Greg, I think, uh, a little more concerned with what that tarantula might do if he were to jump onto him. Uh, which would have probably made do him not, scream that loud. Joe, he was not comfortable taking the it. pictures without the idea that I might <laughs> just kind of toss it onto him. So. 
All right, okay. <laughs> it got a little weird there because I, I felt the vibe on throwing that damn thing on me. Woo, that's a big spider. New Mexico is, is big. You can see stuff coming for miles. There's a horizon line. See, it is, in fact, the land of enchantment. You can tell he's a, he obviously a dominant buck because he's with the does. Culturally, uh, it's, one of the, it's one of the neatest places in the world. It's one of the oldest places for civilization, certainly in North America. This is big country. Looking at it at a distance, it all looks like a, a golf course, but when you get down to traveling through it, it's pretty darn rough. My grandfather came out here with his father in somewhere around 1917, kind of got some funding together. He came back in 1937 and bought this ranch, and it's been in our family ever since. Carter Ranch is located in, in east central New Mexico, but we're about 20 miles from the small community of Fort Sumner, which is the home of Billy the Kid. Most people know of Billy the Kid, but they may not know have ever heard of Fort Sumner. One of the only pictures of him in existence, he's holding that gun. It was a great opportunity to kind of step into uh, almost a timeless place that uh, has so much history, so rich in background and history. And to end up in Fort Sumner, where, of course, uh, is where Billy the Kid met his demise at the hands of Pat Garrett. Well, you look through binoculars and it feels like you could just reach out and touch it with your hand, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And you bring it down, you realize that's three miles away. Joe and I met back uh, in the days of Peterson Publishing Company. Uh, he was working for Hunting Magazine, and I was actually working for Bow Hunting Magazine. Creativity and the outdoors run deep in the Tinsley family. Greg started his career in publishing and broadcast with the family company, Tinsley and Tinsley Publications, as the lead creative director for the Texas Outdoor Times. From there, Greg went on to pursue national and international outdoor audiences by working with Peterson's Publishing Company on bow hunting and hunting magazines. Today, Greg resides in Mississippi and writes for a variety of outdoor publications. Well, I was talking to, to Greg a, a few months back and we were talking about the fact that it's been too long since we, uh, we'd done a hunt together. Every place is good for a 17 or wow. 18 inch goat. Would, an, you, would you be happy with that? That's an eye popper. Man, what is the length on that? Plan about seven inches for the ear. And then guesstimate above and then that. And guesstimate above that. Anything that prongs above the ear is going to be a decent coat. Well, this okay. lo this looks like you're 14 before it even starts curling. Yes, sir. So what what are you looking at? 16 inches there? I'd call him 17 probably. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Benelli on assignment is all about an assignment, following a rider around. Uh, so the idea was there to get an assignment and do something about this hunt. We'll set the sticks up here. All right. Uh, maybe get you back over there. I'll set up and aim out toward the wide open space there. All right. Uh, you can frame a that, shot up or two. Greg said, you know, with the way I like to hunt, I, I, I'd like to choose something interesting to, to hunt the antelope with. Nothing in the chamber. How does that look, Joe? I'm telling you, it looks good. How about an 1885 high wall in 4570? And I said, you've got it. John Browning designed the high wall single shot rifle at the end of the buffalo hunting era in 1878. Winchester began producing on a mass scale in 1885. Today, Uberti continues the old western style tradition with their 4570 model. Just like the original, Uberti's model is designed with a tang mounted rear sight for long range shooting, a feature most definitely needed on this pronghorn hunt. That first morning sighting in was his chance to uh, become familiar with it, and uh, he had a little bit of a struggle with the with the iron sights, as anybody does who, who's not, you know, familiar with it. Wow. Them. So that's 100 yards. I don't know if I'm going to be able to shoot at an antelope much past that. Well. With my ability. Then you better get ready to crawl. I've got some federal power shock in a 300 grain spear, hot core, soft point bullet. That is a lump of lead. The 4570 government cartridge was named for the 45 caliber bullet with the cartridge case holding 70 grains of black powder. It was adopted by the US military in the 1870s. Federal premium ammunition continues production of this caliber under its Power Shock brand, providing proven performance and consistency. Uh, so we were able to 
Walk those iron sights in on target. Get the gun fairly familiar with it. Put it in the middle. All right. Here it goes, live round. Boy, that's that's when you start feeling like it's really gonna happen. Like you're actually gonna get to go hunt antelope with something really, really cool the next day. That'll work. That'll work. That's minute of antelope at Sweet. 100 yards. Beautiful. That looks like the kind of bullet that could take an antelope down. What you want to see is one that just knocks your eyes out as soon as you see it. There's another one. He requires closer inspection. Because of the size of these, uh, these ranches and the areas that you're hunting, uh, you, you, you do have to cover ground with the vehicle. But what you want to do, ideally, is get to a, to a, a point, usually a high point, where you can glass. Another 100 yards or something, maybe. You got something? I don't know, maybe walk another 100 yards where we can make sure it's all right. downside of that thing. When you hunt big country, when you hunt the wide open range country where these big New Mexico pronghorns exist, you better have somebody like Bryce Mansell with you because uh, you get out in the middle of that country and it, 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 it can all start looking pretty much the same. And this was a, a guy that could get us out there and get us back. There's a buck standing kind of out there in the middle of that deal between the two fences here. Uh -huh. Got him. As we get going on this hunt, the reality of it uh, starts to become very clear. We've got uh, antelope dispersed like they haven't been in five or six years because the rain conditions, there's plenty of water, there's plenty of food, they're spread out. Is he on us? I'm sure he is. The way that road lays, or the, the way that fence lays back left right there, that deal's all just kind of a big old wing hanging out off there. But for him, it'd be easier for us to go around, mm -hmm. back around by the main road to get to. There he's moving now. And these antelope can see very well. As soon as you see them from two miles away, they're standing there looking at you. And there's a lot going on. The, the pressure packed at two days. We've checked this area out. Bryce has located one buck that we're gonna go check I out. I think we ought to go look at it. Go back to the road and uh, ease around and see what he is. Well guys, we're a quarter of the way through the New Mexico pronghorn season. Boy, it, it happens fast here, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. You gotta be ready to go in New Mexico. The uh, first day uh, of, of hunting, it was a, a lot of uh, uh, drive time, more drive time probably than anybody really wanted to do. It's a tough hunt, <laughs> it really is. The first day, we basically Tally -ho. Tally -ho covered ground with the vehicle and with the idea that uh, hopefully we might spot something that uh, was reasonably close to the vehicle and uh, that we could then you know, make a plan to stalk. What are the chances of us being, getting in position where he's gonna just run by? Slim and none. But what in fact we found was that everything was pretty wild, to be honest. It was uh, not very tolerant of, of the presence of a vehicle. He's moving, he, he's not staring at us. I mean, he's looking this way. Eventually, he, eventually he's gonna run into a river he can't cross. It's called the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Everybody needs to be a fair chase hunter, uh, but there are different degrees of fair chase hunting. And when you go with one of these old guns, whether it's an 1885 Uberti or a flintlock. Boy, you can really make it as tough as you want to. So it was a frustrating day. I think the best thing to do would be to go back to that road we came in on. Is it always this tough? I think we were all kind of frustrated a little bit with uh, what we'd seen and the availability, uh, the opportunity. Uh, so uh, tension uh, it was a little bit high, but of course, uh, we're hunting, uh, we're enjoying what we're doing, uh, and if you can't have fun doing that, then uh, you know you really shouldn't even be out here. And the sun is... There it is. ...officially down. So Bryce, we're back here early in the morning. Early, early. First light. First light, be on the road this way. Beautiful.
Well, in New Mexico, with a firearm, they give you a whole 48 hours to get it done. We got a little cloud cover, and in fact, it's cold. We've got half the season left. Time to... Half the season burned. Time to do the deed, if we're gonna do it. What's the plan for today? Oh, I think we'll go up there on this hill and do a lot of glassing and... Early? Bottom. Glass early? Yep, glass early and... And off hunt hard. If we can spot an antelope before they know or are aware of us, we've got a chance of, of getting up on them, on our own two feet, get down to within shooting distance of an antelope. Single file, slow, right at him, no side to side movement is, is my thought on this. Make a stalk on this guy? Absolutely. This particular buck had only one doe with him, so we only had the two sets of eyes there. Right, he's moving right up to her now. I don't have a fear of him seeing us. I have a fear of her seeing us. I think we are taking another whack off the distance. Yeah. We realized that, in fact, they're just moving naturally, and so we stayed with them. But the staying with them meant we were committed to a long walk. They're playing right into our hands, boys. I think this thing is like a, the tumblers of a lock or a lining for us. This is going to be good. We're going to shoot this buck. A couple hours into this thing, we're thinking something was developing. We're about to make that last push and we lose sight of him. So we take off going right in to, uh, to make the close contact on him and wind up walking right up on him. And boom, next thing I know, there he is. It's yours to call. Don't waste time. But when he comes out, I'm gonna shoot him. Yeah. It is fourth down, and I'm rolling right, and boom, airmail one. I don't know where it hit. Over him, over him. If we hustle up this hill, he's going to be right there. He ain't spooked at all. Let's go. The antelope runs off now, oh, probably 100 yards. We've changed position, get the sticks back up, and Greg settles down again. Oh, gosh. Mm, now he hits low. Darn it. What huh? It's going to be a long day, boys. The season ends in <laughs> four, four hours. hours, and we can soak our feet in ice. You're getting older with every step, and we have committed a morning. We've gotten in there. I've blown the shot. We've taken up three quarters of the season, and we haven't filled a tag. Bryce, who never stops looking, and he said, hey, guys. There's one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty nice buck. You know, he's not bad, and he's quite approachable with that cover and the wind. You know, it may be time to get realistic and, and just uh, maybe me slide over there and see if I can't get a round in him. I think you ought to go for it, seriously. It wasn't a giant buck, but at that point, the, the thought was, let's get one on the ground uh, with the high wall. Had an interesting little, uh, little red sand hill that I guess had been left there from the Eocene period or something, but it, it gave me a little bit of a break there, and I was able to, to get right down there and get up and get the sticks on him. <laughs> Another miss. But he gathers himself, reloads, down he goes. Greg, well done, man. Good shooting. <laughs> That was a bit of a poke. Whoa, what a day, what a morning. Man, looks, well like, done. looks like we've ended it uh, well for me. How far out is it? <laughs> Thanks, man. It was a euphoric uh, a moment there. Uh, he, he certainly wasn't the biggest antelope uh, in New Mexico or Colorado or the Southwest, but uh, real trophy to me. Nice buck. You're not kidding. Look at the ivory tips on him. Boy, I love their coloration. What a fabulous yeah. adventure. It's all about the experience. The, uh, the friends you have that you're sharing it with, the new friends that you make. And of course, I was on assignment. I, it would have been a real bonus to get something to be able to write a kind of a cool story about our experience and, and that high wall gun. Get Greg Tinsley's full account of the Uberti 1885 high wall rifle and this New Mexico pronghorn hunt in the 2010 annual edition of Peterson's Hunting Magazine. My choice of weapon on this hunt. I've never killed anything with iron sights. A big game animal anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's certainly 
a historic throwback and, and fun to get out in this old wild country with something like this.